Hello and welcome to what, why and how. In continuation with our series on PCA, in this video, let us understand what covariance matrix means and why it is very useful in performing PCA. We understand what variance means. In this example, if you have captured the distances that you have run during your morning run and plotted them on a number line and if it looks something like this, this can be called as a data set with a very low variance. That is because all these data points are very close to the mean. However, if your data set looks something like this, where each data point is dispersed very far from the mean, this is a data set with very high variance. In general, variance denoted by sigma square is defined as the sum of square of distances of all these data points from the mean divided by the total number of data points. However, if you have a data set which contains two dimensions, for example, if you have a data set of students in a class with weight in the x direction and height in the y direction and each point here de denotes an individual student. In this case, we can calculate the variance of this particular data set in each direction by taking the projection of these data points in that specific direction and applying the variance formula. However, if you want to understand how these two dimensions are varying with each other, that is where the covariance comes into picture. Covariance tells you in a multidimensional space how each dimension varies with each other. For example, in this case, you can see intuitively that weight and height are increasing with each other. As weight increases, the height increases. So covariance is calculated by slightly tweaking the variance formula. It is a sum product of the distances of each data point from their corresponding mean in each direction divided by the total number of data points. The covariance matrix, which is a 2 by 2 matrix in a two-dimensional space, gives details of how these data points vary within each direction as well as across directions. So the covariance matrix in a 2 by 2 space, the first element gives what is the variance of these data points in the x direction and what is the covariance of these data points in x and y direction, what is the covariance of y with respect to x and then what is the variance with respect in the y direction. Note that variances of variance in x and variance in y direction can also be written as covariance of x with respect to x and covariance of y with respect to y as well. The covariance matrix is very important in that it gives us the direction in which the data set has the highest amount of variance. Let us understand this with an example. Assume you have a data set like this, again the data set of students in a class, but now the x-axis denotes the weight of the students in the class and y-axis denotes the age of the students in the class. In general, all the students in a class usually have the same age. However, their weights might vary widely. That is what this data set represents, where the variance of this data set in the weight dimension is pretty high, whereas the variance of this data set in the age dimension is very low. In other words, if I ignore the age dimension in this data set completely and capture only the weight related details of the students in this data set, I wouldn't lose much information. I would almost have the same information as I would have if I captured both age and weight of the students from this data set. What this tells me is that the weight direction here in this data set captures the most information that is present in the data set. Also, the weight is the dimension which has the highest amount of variance. To generalize, we can say that the direction or the dimension with the highest amount of variance is the dimension with the highest amount of information. This concept is very important because what this tells me is that any dimensions in a multi-dimensional data set with very low variance are those dimensions which also has very less information in them and ignoring those dimensions wouldn't cost me much information. If I go back to my original data set which captures the weight and height of the students, I can see that this is the direction 
which has the highest amount of variance in this data set. This is where the covariance matrix comes into picture, where the covariance matrix helps us identify what are the directions which contain the most amount of variance or in other words the most amount of information in an n-dimensional coordinate space. To further understand this, let us understand what happens if I take covariance matrix as a transformation matrix and apply linear transformation. As we talked about, this orange line here represents the direction which contains the highest amount of variance in this data set. And this matrix here is the covariance matrix of this particular data set. Let us take any vector 1, 0 and then see what happens if I apply a linear transformation in this coordinate space using this covariance matrix. We see that the vector 1, 0 changed in its direction and also changed in its magnitude. But what is interesting to see is that after the transformation, the vector changed its direction to the direction which contains the highest variance. Is it specific to the basis vector 1, 0? Let's take example of another vector, the green vector here and see what happens if a linear transformation is applied using the covariance matrix as a transformation matrix. We see that as the transformation is applied, the green vector rotated again in the direction of the highest variance. What happens if I apply the transformation again on this transformed vector? The vector rotated slightly more towards the direction of highest variance. If I apply the transformation again, if I apply the transformation again and again, we notice that the vector now is only increasing in magnitude but not changing the direction. The direction remained to be the direction in which the data set has the highest variance. Does this ring any bell? What type of vector when a transformation is applied changes only in magnitude but not in direction? Yes, that's right. These are the eigenvectors of this transformation matrix. But what is the reason why all these vectors are rotating in a specific direction? To understand that, let us see what happens when this transformation is applied to the entire coordinate space. We see that this entire coordinate space is getting compressed in the direction of this highest variance and therefore each vector also gets rotated in this specific direction. So the conclusion here is that when you apply a linear transformation on a coordinate space using the covariance matrix as a transformation matrix, all the vectors in that particular coordinate system rotate in the direction of the highest variance. And what is the final direction which has the highest variance? That is the direction which is represented by the eigenvectors of this particular covariance matrix. To summarize, the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix of a particular data set indicate the direction which contains the highest variance in that particular data set. And whatever we perform in PCA hinges on this specific important concept, which is the reason why we use a covariance matrix as the transformation matrix in PCA and we use the eigenvectors as the basis vectors to perform this transformation. We'll discuss more about this in our next and final chapter about PCA. Hope this gives you an intuition of what covariance matrix is and why eigenvectors of a covariance matrix are the vectors which represent the direction which contains the highest variance in a data set or the highest amount of information in a data set. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments below and I would like to answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you.